Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues with the big boys of boxing. Six rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing to you first to my left in the blue corner, he's wearing solid black trunks and weighed in at 18 stone. Coming to us from Trondheim, Norway, his record consists of 15 wins, 20 defeats, with six wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daniel Shrek Perrette. And his opponent in the red corner, he's wearing green trunks with white and weighed in at 17 stone, 10 pounds. Hailing from Manchester, he was the 2008 ABA Senior Super Heavyweight Champion and now as a professional, he is undefeated with two wins and both of his wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Tyson Fury. There's the Tyson Fury fan Six club. Six rounds scheduled. Our referee it's charge, fair to say that Daniel Parrott virtues. doesn't miss too many meals. Tyson Fury, big strong lad. And when you see them side by, by side, when you'll I see that Fury has all the physical in advantages. The the going down, the other one goes to a neutral corner. Okay? Defend yourself at all times. Best of luck. This is a young fella who, not this one, this is not a particularly young fella, this is a young fella who is uh, physically taller than both the Klitschkos. He's an absolute giant. <laughs> Let's see, that's how good he can look here. Perret, who was telling me yesterday he's fought tall men before. He says he has actually been in the ring against a fellow who is bigger than Tyson Fury. There's not too many of those. Nikolai Valoev would be one, I suppose. There's not many. Now, already you can see, although... Uh, we're looking for a marked improvement in, in Fury. You can see it immediately because what he's not trying to do is just knock this guy out. He's not going out there like he did in his last fight and just unloaded with everything. He's trying to be sensible. So he's not putting everything into every punch. Perez, his nickname uh, is Shrek. Been a pro since 2004. He does have 15 wins to his name. He's got to find a way of getting in close and landing some punches. Nothing so far. But this is all Tyson Fury has to do. Keep it like that, just keep it long. And he'll get exactly what he's looking for. Good uppercut from Fury. Caught him with a nice right hand as he came in close. For a big man, he's got very quick hands. There are a few people who said to me after the last fight, ah, a bit of an arm puncher, does he really punch hard? I thought that was harsh because I think the fellow he fought was an extremely tough, strong man. Well, you show me a heavyweight that doesn't hit hard, it's almost impossible. I think what, perhaps what they're trying to say, John, or what they mean is, you know, they want to see development in his punches. Tyson wearing a very long pair of new shorts tonight, which uh, seem to possibly be half a size too big, judging by the way they're moving in a downwards direction. Well, the colours, right? That's my favourite colour. Irish ancestor eight. That's where it comes from, that's what it signifies. <laughs> Name like Mackenzie, you'd be a Scot, wouldn't you? Absolutely. There's an, a cut, I believe, on somewhere. And that's a good body shot from Fury. No, it's not a cut, sorry, I do apologise. It's a fair, fair target, isn't it, the Perret body? Well, Fury's dominated that. OK. So how are you doing? Stay with 
Tyson Fury winning the first round easily. Daniel Parrott with a little bit of blood from his nose and a bit of uh, grazing around his left eyebrow. It, it, it's punch bag time for Fury. He knows he can beat this guy at a canter. So he's not getting involved, doesn't need to be involved. Uses his reach well, uses his height well, and is trying to introduce one or two little, which we'll call them tactics. You know, showing him a right hand, hitting him with a, a left hook, perhaps. Parrott not really able to land anything of note so far, just using that bull-like strength to try and get in close. Well, Parrott's not going to out-jab him, and he doesn't have the speed. Seen a fair few doormen who've looked a bit like Danny Parrott. Most of whom you wouldn't want to argue with. Well, he's just covering up, isn't he? I think once Fury gets through with the uppercut, it's, it will be all over. He's cut now, cut on the left eye. They'll be looking closely at that between rounds, I'm sure. Well, that would have done him a favour because he's... You know, as I said, it, it's like punch bag practice for, for Fury. Well, he'll know now that he's got to he's got to work and he's got to try and get into this fight somehow, Parrot, because it, with that cut, and it doesn't look great, it may be that there's not a six-round fight in him. He's trying to guard it well enough. Well, there are plenty of people who will say, look at the state of this guy, what's he doing in the ring against Tyson Fury? Well, if you look at the early records of many a professional boxer, they've been in against fellas like this. Tan did reach the uh, did reach the jaw of Fury there. Those body shots were good by Fury. He's hurt, hurt him. He's hurt him, Duke. He's backing away now. I don't think he wants too much more. Fury senses it. Bit of a look of desperation now about Perret. Well, those body shots obviously carry quite a lot of power because you know he's got a, quite a big mid drift to soak that up. But you know they got through so. Complained that one of them was low, apparently. Oh, that was a good shot, that left hook. <laughs> Bell goes to end the second round. Let's have a look in this corner. Robert Waldstadt, his corner man, is going to be taking a close look at it. Let's see how bad the damage is. Yeah. It's not great. That is not good. And the referee having a very close look, Ken Curtis. He stopped it. No! He stopped it. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it one little bit. No, no, no. He's furious. But the referee has said no more, and the fight is over. You've got a cut eye. You can't continue with that. No, no, no. I know that. No! He's being told by his corner, you've got a cut eye. There's no way you can continue. Parrot is furious and he's being told that if you fought on it would tear open and it would get even worse. It's going to need stitches as it is. Proud man, fighting man. We reckon there was a bit of a nick at the end of the first round, but the damage really came in the second. I don't think it was that cut which ended the fight, which came in the first round. A few boos from the crowd, but it's all very well for them to jeer, but you don't want to see lasting damage done. Well, of course you don't, and it's okay to scream and shout and rant and rave, but obviously the corner have got his best interest at heart. That would tear open. It's probably the best thing. You know, he wasn't going to win this fight, certainly not on points. Well, easy, easy night's work, in all honesty, for Tyson Fury, and I don't think we know anything more about him now than we did six minutes or so ago.
except that he's now got three wins instead of two, and he was clearly far too good and far too much for fighters of this sort of man's calibre. Ladies and gentlemen, after two completed rounds of boxing, our referee in charge, Ken Curtis, stops the contest due to a laceration above the left eye of the blue corner. Therefore, your winner, and still undefeated, Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury moves on. Bigger tests ahead, no doubt. And, uh, well, that didn't really tell us too much. Perrett disappointed, but it had to be ended when it did. Yes, Perrett upset about it, and uh, the crowd upset here, because when Tyson Fury gets into the ring these days, they look and hope to see spectacular knockouts. But it's another win for Tyson. Don't forget John Faxon defending that European uh, lightweight crown coming up very shortly, plus that film uh, before that, the special tribute to Reg Guthridge. But when you rejoin us, uh, we'll be having a word with Mr Fury. Fury has won his third professional fighter, Danny Perrett, a Russian based in Norway, couldn't come out after the second round. And uh, were you hoping for a bit more? To be honest, I, uh, I knew that the kid wasn't hurt badly. It, it was just unfortunate he got a cut. And uh, what can you say? It's, it's due to slashing punches and speed and accuracy, really. From your point of view, I think one of the things that impressed the guys was that you, you took a measured approach to this fight. You didn't just steam out and look to get rid of him in the first 30 seconds. Oh, no. Um, I learned a lot from the last um, fight I had. And um, I just wanted to show what I, what I can do, but just I only got to show a little bit of it. But um, I'm going to show you something new in Birmingham, I promise. OK, well, don't, don't worry about Birmingham. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about tonight first. You're still a baby, really, a very big baby. You're still learning this professional game. What do you learn from tonight's fight? Yeah, I'm a baby. My mother's baby anyway, <laughs> apart from anybody else's. Uh, learn from tonight um, just to relax and take it easy. Don't uh, rush for the stoppage, but um, take it if it comes. And tonight it comes, so I'm really happy that it did, but um, we'll see what, what happens next from here. Now, I'm going to say this to you very gently, because I'm not saying that this comes from me, but after one of your fights, one or two people in the fight game says, he doesn't really punch hard enough. Nope. He, that's, that's what one or two people have been saying. How do you respond to that? Um, well, I don't really know what, pe what fight people are watching and what Tyson Fury, and maybe two twins, I don't know. But um, I believe all heavyweights can punch. It's not about punching power, it's how you deliver your punches correctly. If the knuckles turn down, then someone's going to go over if they're connected on. But I must to say I've, um, I can't punch. I don't blame them. I want to I wanna make them watch me again to see if I can punch. Right. And I'll prove it to them. Who's next on your hit list? Um, well, I don't know. It's all up to Mick, isn't it? I've been challenging out people for, a, I don't know, a long time. All, all my boxing life, really. But um, it's up to the people who want to box me. But I'm, I think I'm being avoided at the moment, so... I hope to God that any British person, just one British person, will get in the ring with me on uh, February, um, February, 14th next March. 14th of March. Absolutely, March the 14th. Just one thing for you, I know you've been working very hard in training. Uh, those old shorts are a bit big for you now, aren't they? Well, these are new shorts, but uh, I've not uh, jumped on the scale for like five, six weeks since the last fight. And I weighed in the other day and I was, well, amazed really. 17 tennis lights, they've been for about two years. And um, I already told Mark to make the shorts. Uh, before I check weight, so um, I'm going to have to get a smaller pair. Yeah. But um, I hope to be in a bit better shape for, shape for my next fight. And uh, I'd just like to uh, thank everyone at uh, Smithborough Club for uh, supporting me and giving me, um, well, let's just say a little secret anyway. It's another win under your belt. Well done. Thank you.